Hey, it's Phyllis Rowe from Woman of the Outdoors and I'm here with Rachel and we're gonna check out some mushrooms in this area and introduce you to whatever we find. Hi, I'm Rachel Goklowski. I am a foraging and mushrooming instructor here in the state of Massachusetts. I am a certified educator and I am here to show you some nice mycorrhizal fungi you may be familiar with boletes. Boletes look like this. They don't have any gills underneath. We'll take a little closer look. Mm -hmm. This is similar to a bolete and this genus has been included in the boletes for a long, long time. But then they realized that because of the radial arrangement of the pores and the glandular dots and the slippery, slimy caps, this group of mushrooms needed to be in their own group. And these are the Suillus mushrooms. And this is the Suillus granulatus, the dotted stalk Suillus. So these mushrooms, like the boletes, don't have any gills. They have pores instead to disperse their spores. And these mushrooms are a little bit safer. No mushroom is safe unless you've properly identified it and checked it for all key identifiers um, before eating but generally this group of mushrooms is safer than the gilled mushrooms like amanitas that class is very dangerous because some of our most poisonous mushrooms are in the amanita class so we're staying away from gilled mushrooms as beginners you want to focus on boletes and suillus perhaps so let's ID this a little bit more so the Suillus granulatus, um, like I said, has glandular dots on the stalk. This is a much, as you can see, much more mature specimen. This one really isn't good eating. Once it gets, once these uh, pores get really dingy yellow like this and it gets very large, this is really about Starting as large as wavy. they get. They're so oh, slimy. Oh, it really is slimy. I'm telling you, so this is slimy. like, if you were touching like it's an like egg a frog. Right? I yeah. love it. It feels like a froggy belly. We don't <laughs> want to eat that. Okay, so let's look at a younger specimen that is much better for the dinner table. Okay, we'll leave this like this so you can check out the... All right, this one. Now, you notice I pulled this up. I wanted to pull this up so you could see the end of the stipe or, or the stem because when you're identifying a mushroom, especially um, mycorrhizal fungi, you hear that we're near the road. We don't really want to be too near a busy road when we're um, collecting mushrooms for the table. You want to make sure that you have a clean soil source. But So we got the whole stipe. So what happens at the end of the stem is very important when you're identifying mushrooms. This one tapers at the end of the stem. It doesn't have any vulval sac or anything. That's, that's another um, dangerous um, thing for a mushroom to have, the vulval sac, because there's a lot of poisonous mushrooms that have that. But we're in the Suillus, um, we're in the Suillus group, so there's no sac or vulva down there. But look at these really adorable little glandular dots. This is why it gets its name, the dotted stalk Suillus. And if we look at the pore surface, look, it's not that dingy yellow. We have some nice tight radial pores and it's still a nice light beige color. This is a delicious stage for this mushroom. Look how much smaller it is. And the cap has that nice uh, brown paper bag color Mm -hmm. that you want for a dotted stalk suillus. Now, some suillus have a, a partial veil, like the, um, there is the um, suillus luteus, which looks really similar to this. So the suillus luteus also has a brown cap, but then when you look under the cap, there'll be like a partial veil, and there'll even be a ring and a lot of people get sick if they don't remove that veil and ring when they eat the Suillus luteus. So that would be something that you'd wanna remove if you um, have a sensitive stomach. But this one here, the Suillus granulatus, does not have a partial veil or ring, but it's still a Suillus. If you're harvesting your mushroom, you want to, just like when you're field dressing a deer, it's still called the same thing, field dressing. The reason why we field dress the mushrooms is well, the bottoms are pretty dirty, and if I put this dirty mushroom into my bag, 
it will make all my other mushrooms dirty. When the dirt gets in the pores and the gills of a mushroom, it's very hard to clean. So we wanna get rid of as much dirt as possible before we put our mushrooms in our bag or our basket. And we always harvest mushrooms using a bag or basket, cloth, paper, or a basket. There we go. You do not want to use any plastic bags when you harvest mushrooms because it will make them all slimy and any bacteria on them will just multiply in that plastic. So when you get home, you'll have a really gross mushroom. So that's why we use paper. So see, I got as much dirt off as I could. And ooh, look at that slime. Mm -hmm. That all cooks off when you... So normally I wouldn't pull that mushroom up to see the stipe. If the, these are mushrooms that I have identified and I'm familiar with, I would just cut them. So that way I'm not disturbing any of the mycelium underneath, which is the actual mushroom organism. So this is just the fruit. So cutting it is like picking an apple. So we don't want to disturb the mycelium under there. And so normally I would just cut them knowing what they are. But if I didn't know what it was, I would need to pull it up gently and identify it. And so here, so see, no dirt, cause I cut it, you know, it's gonna be nice. And this one too, these are all tasty at a tasty stage. So how do you cook this mushroom? First of all, if you make sure that you've ID'd your mushroom beyond a doubt, and you've checked all key identifiers, so once you, what you want to do is the first time eating any wild mushroom, any, any species of wild mushroom, if you've never tried it before, you want to try a small amount. So you wouldn't even eat this whole mushroom, you'd eat maybe half of it. And this is a little guy, you have a couple of bites. So we're gonna, what we do to cook this up is you just slice it like you would a button mushroom and then you saute it. You need to saute it in some type of fat. So you can use coconut oil, you can use butter, you can use olive oil. And um, I like garlic salt, maybe some um, spices, and that's about it. This plant at this time of year, it's October, and this is pokeweed. And at this mature stage, this plant is poisonous. The berries are poisonous, the leaves are poisonous, the stalks are poisonous. Don't eat it. There is a medicinal value to these berries, but unless you're an herbalist or you're working with an herbalist, do not eat the berries. They have, um, this plant is very, very good for the lymphatic system. So some people under the advisement of a certified herbalist or, or um, a, nature, a nature path, will take like one berry a day and this will help their lymph nodes, but I don't recommend it unless you're working with a professional. But see these berries, they're beautiful. A lot of people confuse these with, um, with edible wild food. For example, they look a lot like black cherries, but notice that this is a green plant. It doesn't have any bark on it anywhere. Black cherry is a tree so it would need to have bark on it to even begin to think that it might be black cherry. So again, this is poisonous pokeweed. It's the only time that this plant is edible is in the spring as a shoot. So 10 inches high or shorter as a shoot before the leaves uh, start branching. So there shouldn't be any branching going on and it should be a shoot in springtime. And even then you have to cook it, you have to boil it. And um, I have a YouTube on my YouTube channel, Cooking with Mrs. G, that goes through the entire process. I filmed it in the springtime, so I identify it. I um, talk about the nutritional value and medicinal value, and I cook it. So if you are interested in that, you can you know go to my YouTube, Cooking with Mrs. G, and you can watch that. But this is and don't forget weed. to subscribe to Cooking with oh, Mrs. Yeah. G. It's a good idea to subscribe because then if you subscribe, um, I have a lot of video footage that I took this year that I didn't have time to make into videos. So I'm going to be doing all kinds of video editing this um, winter. So I'm going to be adding them. And then if you hit subscribe, you'll see a little notification that I have put a new video on. Awesome. So anyway, pokeweed, don't eat poisonous
only for the spring and only cooked very thoroughly and properly. Um, not really an edible, it's more of a medicinal, but you can eat the berries. They taste great when they're ripe like this. This is wintergreen, and you're gonna find this on the forest floor all year round practically. Um, so I really like it in the, in the fall and the winter. I like to find this when I'm, you know, I'm hunting and I'm sore and you know, I've been walking around a lot and my, you know, my bones are aching, my joints are aching because this um, contains, this wintergreen oil contains methyl salicylate which is closely related to aspirin. It's an anti-inflammatory. So you don't really eat these. Um, wintergreen oil and higher concentrations, like large concentrations, is poisonous. So you only want a little bit of wintergreen oil. What I do is I will take these leaves and I don't eat them, I just chew on them. And you'll taste, it tastes like wintergreen lifesavers. I chew on the leaves, you know, while I'm walking around in the woods and um, after a while I'll feel like it's like an aspirin that methyl salicylate will take effect it's a great anti-inflammatory and these little red wintergreen berries very tasty taste like a wintergreen lifesaver and uh, they make a nice trail nibble talk about a poisonous mushroom this is a amanita muscaria it's one of the varieties of the amanita muscaria and um, you know, it could be the Gasawii. It These are both kind of old. So I'm thinking they're Am Amanita muscaria uh, Gasawii. So this class of mushrooms, the Amanita class does contain edible mushrooms, but it that this class also contains some of our most deadly poisonous mushrooms. And the Amanita muscaria variation Gasawii here is poisonous. So. Um, some people will use this mushroom um, as a psychedelic mushroom. I do not advise this at all <laughs> because um, even though um, you can trip off this, you will also get very, very sick. And if you don't know what you're doing and, it, and it's really difficult to get the correct information, if you don't know what you're doing, you will shut down your organs. And we're talking your liver and your kidneys in four days will shut down and you will die. So do not mess around with this, um, the Amanita muscaria mushroom or any of the varieties, I do not advise. So let's look at some of the key identifiers for this Amanita mushroom. And that a lot of um, key identifiers for this mushroom will go for other Amanitas in the Amanita class. So first of all, obviously we've got gills. We don't have pores this time, we've got gills. And they're white or light colored gills. On the top here, you see all these cool little warts. Um, these are remnants of the veil. This mushroom came up um, from an egg. They had a complete veil over it and it burst out of the egg and then whatever was left of the veil are these little dots. And you know, it's, it's really gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful mushroom but it, this is a key identifier for the Amanita muscaria or the fly agaric. Fly agaric is another good name. Here's another key identifier for this mushroom. This, we found this broken off. Um, someone had kicked it. There's another key identifier. So you notice I'm pulling up the stipe because we have to look at this sac here. Okay, remember I said that it, it emerged from an egg, uh, a vulval sac, and this is what's left of that egg. For this particular um, fly agaric variety, it has this very rugged, you know, shape. It has these very, very rugged scales all the way around the base. And then you get down to this bulbous end here. All of these are key identifiers for the Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric, and this particular variety has all of these very corrugated ringlets down here. Now speaking of rings, let's look at the other one here because this ring really is very nice. This is a skirt. Okay, you'd have rings and then you have a skirt. The skirt is like a really pronounced ring. The reason why you have a skirt on this, like I said, is this was a not a partial veil. This was a complete veil. So when you get a complete veil, you don't just get a ring. You get a skirt, which is like a lot of ring. And um, that'll happen a lot when you get a full veil. 
Again, this is a poisonous mushroom. It's in the Amanita class. The Amanita class of mushrooms is one to avoid as a beginner. Thank you for joining us today, Rachel and Phyllis, for our foraging adventure.